Hi, this is Rich Overton with Remedy Jam Outburst. I'm here with the one and only Miss Billy Myers. Hello. Remedy Jam Outburst is based on when you hear the right songs at the right moment and it just changes your whole perspective on things. And you were one of those artists for me way oh, back when, when we met 10 years ago. Indeed. And um, so a Remedy Jam to me is a song that really just changes your outlook in any bad situation or any outlook that you might have. If you're having a bad day and you hear the right song on the radio, you go, that's my Remedy Jam. Like for me at the moment, Miley Cyrus, Party in the USA. Is that your Remedy that's Jam my, at the moment? Yeah, that song comes on and it doesn't matter what mood you're in, I'm all of a, it's Party in the USA. I put my hands up. I love that. In my song. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing though when you're trying to be taken seriously as a singer-songwriter. But honestly, I wish I'd written that song. That song does it, Spice Girls. The Spice oh, Girls do it? What you want, what you, those are the songs, if, I want it, if I'm in a, like an iffy mood and those songs come on, it's, it's impossible to stay in an iffy mood. See, it's so funny because for me, it's a lot of the music that are either the ballads or the, the more sad, depressing music is what helps me. I don't know what that says about me. But, is, but are there any songs like that for you, even way oh, back yeah, when? No, there are. There are loads of um, depressing songs that I like to listen to, but I don't listen to them necessarily when I'm happy. So what would they be? They would be, um, oh my God, um, Schneider Khan and Nothing Compares to You is a mm. definite. So if I'm in a, like a, oh my, the world hates me mood, that comes on, I can be right. weeping and wailing. Um, Sarah McLaughlin, um, Angel, I think. That, I think that's from doing Lilith and actually watching her perform it live. And so, you know, she just did it on the piano and it was so heartbreaking that now whenever I hear it, and I mean, it's been quite embarrassing. I was doing a stretch class at my gym one time and they decided to use this as part of the stretching. And I actually welled up. That's, that's how, did you really? yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a... How was the rest of the day for you after the class? It was all right, but I mean, I did walk out kind of like, oh God. But yeah, so there's, and there's another Sinead O'Connor song called Jealous, which mm. is another one guaranteed to make me... <laughs> That'll yeah. do it to you. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many people who know you for Kiss the Rain, Tell Me, Am I Here Yet? <laughs> and I know a lot of those songs are remedy jams for so many people. Um, let's talk about the new album. Okay. Tea and Sympathy. Yes. Um, so it seems to be a long time in the making. Yes. Um, how was the whole process for you? Just returning, in a sense, and really getting music back out there to the masses? Oh, it was a long process for an assortment of different reasons. Um, but. And difficult. I mean, it was the first time, the first time round. You know, I was obviously I was with a record company, which makes a huge difference. You don't realise how how easy you have it when you have a record company with you. Um, but but now, um, you know, it's just me and my label. So everything is a little slower and takes a little longer to get there. But I'm enjoying it. Right. I mean, and you have complete it. control now. I do, I do. What you want to do. I do. Well, in fairness to Universal, I had complete control then. They never actually, um, never once creatively said anything negative. So mm. I was one of those very lucky artists, I guess, who, whose record company were just incredibly supportive of whatever I wanted to do. So. That's great. And you've yeah. worked with many um, amazing with many amazing singer-songwriters yeah. on this record too, yeah, so including, you know, when I grew up, Shakespeare's Sister was oh my God, just yeah. one of, The Stay was just one of the songs I was obsessed with the video. Yeah, I was obsessed with the video and that's another one that can still come on now and make me stop in my tracks. I mean, yeah, I got to work with uh, Marcella Detroit mm -hmm. and um, it, it's funny to me because I remember for years um, trying to hit that note that she starts a song with and I always laugh I'm just like it's never gonna happen but I gotta try and, uh, and then when you're actually working with her and she just she seriously just can go ah! and that note comes out and you're just like oh I hate you <laughs> I really really do dislike you right now but she's um, honestly I, I don't I she's one of those people who should be a huge star um, she can do it all and she's an amazing writer mm. and her own stuff if you haven't heard her new stuff Really, you should go and check out her website, yeah. uh, MarcellaDetroit.com. She has um, amazing songs that she's doing right now. Great. Yeah. And I mean, I think there's a similarity between you both because when you hear the voices, you know who they are. And oh, I don't think anyone has ever come close to you. And if you know if you're hearing a Billy Myers song, that is Billy Myers. And I think that's what, not what we're missing these days, but it's really hard to come by with yeah. all the music that's out there now, as far as I, being that yeah, distinct. I think. I mean, I'd like to say there was some pre-thought in that, but the truth of the matter is I can only sing how I sing and, 
you know, there, there's a great thing that a lot of singers can do, unfortunately not myself, which is that ability to be able to be a chameleon mm. and to do this voice and that voice and that voice. I've never been able to do that. I couldn't go and sing like Mariah Carey if my life depended on it because I just don't have that type of voice. Um, so yeah, I guess it but is. it's also what makes you unique Hopefully. as an artist. Yeah. Hopefully and, it is. And anyone who has not seen you perform live needs to catch you live <laughs> ASAP. I hope so. I hope so. Well, it depends if I'm falling off stage and hopefully singing in tune, yeah. Well, if you're falling off stage, I'm sure it's being in the moment because you are one yeah. of the artists that are in the moment yeah. and all the emotion comes out on stage. Yeah, it so, does. And rumor yeah. has it, and I know this from first-hand experience, that you like to climb. I do like to climb, Which yes. makes your manager a little nervous. Makes them, yeah, very, very <laughs> nervous. Um, makes the band very nervous too. They I'm have sure. a tendency to be playing the guitar, looking up, and being like, oh God, do I have to catch her? Am I gonna? The record company used to like beg me not to um, climb, and they used to, uh, my tour manager used to put tape on the speaker racks, do not go. And he did it twice, and he realized that doing that was so wrong, because it was, to me, it was like X marks the spot. Right. And the more they would do it, the more I would do it. And then one time they just put X's right across, the, right across everywhere and anywhere, and like try and, and and taped it off in Canada. I always remember this. And there was a pole about a hundred yards. It was a big uh, arena, and there was a pole about a hundred yards straight ahead. So I jumped off stage, ran up to the pole, which was a TV tower pole. So it went up about a hundred foot, and I ran right up it and climbed straight up it. <laughs> and just said, and I said, now come on, because there was the security guy who was supposed to be with me when I went into the audience, and okay. I was like, come on then, keep following, and he bless him, he was, he was so out of breath, and I was just like, there you go, and I was like, that's for you, Mario, <laughs> just for you. So is it true you're actually afraid of heights off stage? Yeah, the hate heights. Yeah. And how, how does that work? What comes yeah. over you when you're on stage? I don't know. Nervous energy. I've always said that um, that. I honestly, I'm probably one of the most nervous people on stage, and I think, I hope, that it comes out in making me a little phonetic. Like, I cannot stand still. Right. Um, um, I'm having to walk, I'm having to do things. And I think maybe that nervous energy sort of throws me over and goes, oh, I'm not scared of heights right now. I, I, I never feel like me when I go on stage. In fact, I probably couldn't go on stage, but whoever my little alter ego that comes out in the so tight jeans that I can't bend outfit. Well, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. So one quick um, last question. If you were to see a New Yorker walking down the street and they were wearing heaven, what would it look like? It would look like Billy Myers holding a platinum record. There you go. I love that. <laughs> BillyMyers.com. Thank you so much for doing this. Are you kidding? Thank you. This is a great idea. I can't wait to see what other people have to, uh, have to say about their, you know, their remedy jams and I love that. Awesome. Thanks, Billy. See you later. Toodles.